Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, new session on uh, Java. So in today's session we are going to discuss about Java inner classes. Remind you that in the previous session we were talking about the adapter classes in Java and we saw how adapter classes are far more powerful than listener interfaces. So today we shall see what are Java inner classes. So what are inner classes? Inner classes are nothing but the classes which are nested among each other. Very straightforward. For example, you must have heard of uh, nested for loop or you must have heard of uh, nested if condition. So what is a nested for loop? You have one for loop within another for loop. Or you may have one if condition within another if condition. So here in Java you can also have a concept where you can have a class within another class. So this concept is called as inner classes. Now when you have an inner class, the class which contains an inner class is called as an outer class. And the outer class will actually contain the inner class. So in order to understand how this inner class is working and how do you actually create an object of this inner class and how do you access the method of an outer class, you will be able to understand when I show you a program. Now before that, let us understand what are the three types of inner classes. There are basically three types of, I would rather say, implementation of the inner classes. One is called as a member inner class. The second one is called as the anonymous inner class. And the third one is called as an static member inner class. So what we shall do now is we shall take one one example on all of these. We shall try and see what to how to execute these programs and see the output. Okay. Now what is this uh, first one called as inner member class? Now just observe this particular program here. See you have a class called outer. Now within this class you have a method called show. So you know that a class can have uh, uh, variables as well as methods. So or you can call them as class members or methods. Now there is a method called as a show method. Now inside this class you have another class called inner. So inside the inner class you have a method called display. So what I am writing in the display method I am just printing I am from the inner class. Now I am closing the class here. Now how do I uh, create an object of this particular inner class? See in order to create an object of this inner class it is not as simple as how you create object of a class. So you cannot say something like inner o1 is equal to new inner. So it will not work in that way. The reason being since the inner class is inside the outer class. So you have to make use of the outer class in order to access the inner class. So the first and the foremost thing you need to do is you need to create an object of the outer class. See we have done this here. When I say outer obj is equal to new outer, what does it mean? I am creating an object called obj of the outer class. Now since the inner class is within the outer class, I will say outer dot inner obj1. So obj1 is the object of the inner class is equal to obj dot new inner. So this is a very important statement. So obj1 is the object of the inner class. You are calling the inner class constructor by using the outer class object. So what is the outer class object? obj. Now using the obj1 object, now you can access the display method of the inner class. So this kind of uh, methodology where you have one class within another class is called as an inner member class. Now you can say that this inner class is a member of an outer class. Okay. Now the next uh, type of uh, inner classes are called as inner static classes. So we know what are uh, static classes. Uh, static classes are those where which has got a keyword called static. So the methods of the static class uh, will not ha will not require an object to be accessed. So now you just observe this particular program. You have a class called outer class. So inside the outer class you have a method called show. Now I have an inner class which is a member of an outer class but this inner class is actually a static class. So this inner class will have a method called display. 
very similar to the previous program but the only difference here is I am making the inner class as a static class. Now remember this whenever you declare a sta class as static you don't require an object to access the members or the properties of that particular class. Now what I am doing in the main program now I am not creating an object of the outer class. So in the previous example I created an object of an outer class but here I am not creating any object of the outer class. So you can see outer class dot inner class that means you are accessing you are creating the object called obg1 of the inner class which is inside the outer class is equal to new outer class dot inner class. So you are not using the object of the outer class. Now using the obj1 object you are actually invoking the display method. So this is one more uh, method of creating inner classes in Java. Okay. Fine. The third method is called as anonymous inner classes. So in order to understand an anonymous, anonymous inner class, let us take an interface. See I have defined an interface called car which has got a method called move. You know what an interface is. An interface would basically have an abstract method. So if you want to really implement this particular interface, you have to subclass it. That is a general phenomena in Java. That means I have to create a class which will implement that particular interface and then I have to overwrite that particular method called move. But there is an alternate way of doing it. I do not want to subclass it, but still I want to make use of this method called move. I need to override it. So how do I do it? So I can do it in the main function itself. See now you can see I am creating an object called BMW of the car and I am having a constructor here. Now car is a constructor. Now I am not giving semicolon here. So generally when I am creating an object I terminate with a semicolon I am keeping the body open. Now I am creating the class. This is a class definition. So inside the class definition I am having a method called move. So whatever move method is there in the interface here I am overriding it. So what I am writing in the move method I am just printing the output BMW moves. And then I am terminating the uh, class I am terminating the function or the statement Java statement here by putting the semicolon and then finally using the BMW object I am actually calling the move method. So since this class cannot does not have any name it does not have any identity so we call this as the anonymous inner class. That is it for uh, uh, today so we saw what are member inner classes and uh, we saw what are uh, static inner classes and we saw what are anonymous inner classes. Okay. Thank you uh, so much for uh, watching this uh, particular session. Uh, I will see you in the next session. Till then take care. Bye bye.